Hey students, how are you? So today we are going to talk about Dalton's atomic theory. This topic is very important for boards, JEE and NEET exams. So before going to the theory, did you know the history of the formation of word atom? So for knowing this, we have to go to the ancient Greece of 400 BC. So at that time, there was a brilliant philosopher named Democritus and he is the one who proposed the Greek word atomio which means uncuttable or undivisible and from here the word atom is formed ha huh, so now coming back to the topic let's have a look on dalton's atomic theory so on the basis of several experimental studies john dalton published a new system of chemical philosophy in year 1808 in which he proposed some important postulates which played a major role in discovering the nature of matter so now let's see what the postulates are so the first postulate is matter consists of indivisible particles called atoms. So currently you already know that an atom is divisible means it can be divided into three subatomic particles which are electrons, protons and neutrons. But at that time Dalton said that matter is made up of that kind of particles which are cannot be divided. But later on it was proved wrong. Therefore it was a major drawback of this Dalton's atomic theory. Although we will talk about its drawbacks also after completing all the postulates. So now getting back to it and let's talk about the second postulate of this theory. So the second postulate is all the atoms of a given element have identical properties including identical mass. Atoms of different elements differ in mass. It means that all the atoms in one type of element will have same identical properties including mass in comparison to other atoms of that particular element. And here identical properties means mass, size, shape, etc of that atom. Now as I said, one atom's properties will be similar to the other all atoms in the same kind of element. But it will differ in the atoms of other elements. Okay, so now let's understand this more clearly through an example. So for example, let's take two elements which are H2 and O2. So now if we see then H2 contains of two hydrogen atoms, right? And similarly O2 contains two oxygen atoms. So here according to this postulate in this case the properties of this one atom of hydrogen will be similar to this another atom of hydrogen and all the other atoms of hydrogen too. But at the same time, its properties will not be similar to this oxygen atom. Means this one oxygen atom will have similar properties to this another and all the other oxygen atoms. But it will be different in other element atoms. So I think now the second postulate of this theory is also clear. So now let's jump to the third postulate of this theory. So the third postulate is Compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio. Now it means that any particular compound can be formed when the atoms of two or more different types of elements combine in a fixed ratio or we can say that in a particular ratio. So now let's understand this also from an example. So for example, we can take H2O means water. So in this compound you can see that there is a combination of two atoms of hydrogen with one atom of oxygen and by this ratio of combination only both the elements together forming H2O which is the formula of water of course. But in case if we do some changes in its combination ratio then what will happen? So let's find out it by adding one more atom of oxygen in it. So now when we do so then the whole compound will change from water to hydrogen peroxide which chemical formula is H2O2 of course. So now here you can see that we are adding only one atom of oxygen in to the whole compound and only by adding one atom of oxygen to it its complete origin has changed. So that's why according to this postulate for the formation of any particular compound the element should combine in a proper or a particular ratio. There shouldn't be any ups or downs in any of the atoms which are combining. So I think now the third postulate is also clear. So now let's move to the fourth and last postulate of this theory. So the fourth postulate is 
chemical reactions involve reorganization of atoms. These are neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. Now it simply means if any chemical reaction takes place, then the existing atoms means which atoms are already present in them are only reorganized and create a new compound. Although the compound means the product is called a new compound, but during the reaction there is nothing new creating or destroying. They are only reorganizing together. Understood? And by the way, this postulate seemed very similar to the law of conservation of mass, which you have already read earlier in this chapter. Okay, so now I think that all the postulates of this theory are clear in your mind. So now let's move to the limitations of this Dalton's atomic theory. So Dalton's atomic theory was one of the vital contributions in discovering nature of matter. But this theory also have some limitations or we can call it drawbacks. So let's see what the limitations were. So the first limitation was atoms can be further divided into subatomic particles which are well known as electrons, protons and neutrons. So I have already said you in the first postulate that at that time Dalton proposed in his theory that atoms are indivisible. And for many years this statement was accepted also by majority of scientists but later on it was proved that matter consists of atoms but atoms can also be divided into subatomic particles. And due to this the first postulate of this theory was proved wrong and considered as a major drawback of this theory. Got it? Now let's move to the second limitation of this theory. So the second limitation is According to this postulate, the atoms of same element are similar in all aspects. However, atoms of some elements vary in their masses and densities. And these atoms of different masses of same element is called isotopes. So now we have learnt in second postulate of this theory that all the atoms of any particular element contain similar properties to each other in shape, size, mass, etc. But currently, we all know that in some elements, their all atoms doesn't compulsorily have same masses and densities. Yes, the atoms of same element vary in their masses and densities. And these atoms with different properties are called isotopes. And by the way, Dalton in his theory also said that properties of two different elements atom will not be same. But now we know that in many cases, two different elements atoms masses also remained same and these are called isobars. So according to these things, the postulate number 2 is also proved wrong. Hence, it was also considered a major drawback of this theory. So now I hope you all understood about Dalton's atomic theory and its drawbacks, right? So now let's have a look on some important questions related to this theory. So the first question is, according to Dalton's atomic theory, matter consists of individual dash question mark. So A molecules, B atoms, C ions and D mixtures. So I'll give you 5 seconds, think and give the answer. Okay, time up. So did you get the answer? Yes, here it will be atoms. Because if you remember the first postulate of this theory, then there it is mentioned that matter consists of indivisible particles called atoms. So now the second question is, what are the laws supporting Dalton's atomic theory? So if you remember, two laws are supporting this Dalton's atomic theory, which are law of conservation of mass and law of constant proportion. Right? Okay, now the third question is, what did Dalton's atomic theory couldn't explain? So the answer is, Dalton's atomic theory couldn't explain gaseous volumes. Because as per his view, different elements have different masses. But this is not true. This is explained by Gay Lussac in his law. And this is also one of the major drawbacks of Dalton's atomic theory. Now the fourth question is, what is the name of Dalton's publication? So the answer is, Dalton published a new system of chemical philosophy in year 1808. He proposed a theory in that called Dalton's atomic theory. So now the fifth and last question is, all atoms of given element have identical dash including identical dash. And the options are A properties and mass, B weight and volume, C volume and properties and D temperature and pressure. 
सो सिंपली इट्स आंसर विल बी वन बिकॉज अकॉर्डिंग टू डाल्टन एटोमिक थ्योरी ऑल द एटम्स ऑफ एनी गिवन एलिमेंट हैव आइडेंटिकल प्रॉपर्टीज इंक्लूडिंग आइडेंटिकल मैस गॉट इट ओके सो नाउ दिस वॉज इट फॉर टूडेज वीडियो होप यू अंडरस्टूड ऑल द थिंग्स अबाउट डाल्टन एटोमिक थ्योरी सो सी यू गाइज इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो बाय बाय